my special guest today is an awesome actress who has a very special place in my heart as a fan of the bill because her first episode was the second episode I ever saw and cemented me as a fan of this wonderful drama series we're all so fond of. As probationer Debbie Keane, she endeared me and a generation of the Bill fans who, in their numbers, have been demanding her presence on the podcast. (laughs) I'm delighted to say the day has arrived. Ladies and gents, make some noise for the wonderful Andrea Mason. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I didn't expect that. Thanks. Uh, Well, it's a pleasure, and and I I hope you'll indulge me briefly, because I don't usually talk as much as this in an opening but it's not often you know I get the chance to say thank you because you and Alan had a really important impact on my life because it was your first that's when I became a regular viewer of the bill was your first episode I I was nine years old and I saw the (gasps) end of the previous episode Philip Whitchurch leaving as Inspector Cato I remember you know it's not often you actually remember us a specific no. moment in telly, I, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah. I was like, who's this bold guy yelling at everyone? You know, I, I was just <laughs> like, you know, I was interested. And so my mum and dad thought, OK, well, we'll see. You know, he's nine. It might be a bit too adult, but we'll sit down as a family and watch the next episode, which was your right. first episode. And wow. so I, I grew up as you and Alan's characters grew up in the show. You know, I, I joined right there. You were my hook, my entry oh, point into the show. Oh, that's amazing. Thanks. Wow. I never knew that happened, but that's amazing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, you don't often get to do that as a, as a, you know, as a person, actually thank your heroes as you grow up, you know, so... Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. I'm feeling so warm and comfy at the minute. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm radiating light. (laughs) Well, that's my that's my little uh, my little geek section over. But I I wanted to say thanks. And um, yesterday you did something really cool. I wondered if you wouldn't mind sharing with us all. Yes. Yesterday I walked across the Isle of Wight for charity, from east to west, twenty six point five miles in all. It was amazing, actually. I did it seven years ago. And uh, then I'd been doing lots of, you know, went to the gym a lot, did British military fitness, did lots of Zumba, all that, but it really hurt then. I mean, I think I lost my sense of humour about mile 24 <laughs> last time. But this time, because we've got a dog now, oh. so I don't go to the gym often, but I do walk the dog a lot. So I am walking a lot, and that obviously helped because I loved it. There were moments where I found myself wondering whose idea it was, <laughs> but um, I'm sort of glowing today feeling a sense of achievement and me and my friend did it you know so and we raised money so yeah it was a great day out but I think I'm going to take today very very (laughs) how how long did it take and was the weather kind to you well the weather was amazing it was perfect weather because it was uh, you know there was cool breeze and but sunny but not too hot and we were walking through woodland so that was shaded and that you know that was great and the second half was more exposed but it it was never too hot it was it was perfect walking weather actually I'd forgotten how many hills there are, but but we did it, and um, we're all right today. <laughs> Back in London, Love it. getting on with life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> six degrees of separation here, tenuous link, but I edit produced the special features for the Blu-ray release of The Hatton Garden Job, which oh. your talented <laughs> husband starred in. Wow! <laughs> I'm always intrigued, because my, my wife is a lawyer, I'm a creative, we're chalk and cheese, I don't understand her technical legal jargon and she doesn't understand me taking sort of creative risks of my career what yeah what's the dynamic like for two successful actors married and how have you and david made it work uh it it can be difficult if you know generally david gets paid more and he gets off a better job so he uh, we've got a daughter as well so um david goes and does the work and i sort of i do the mum bit so that's happened a lot but um I had a friend I met the other day, and she's married to someone who does a proper job, mm. and she's an actress, and, and she did wonder how two actors together do it. And it is, it can be tricky, but um, as long as one of you's working, then you're all right. You just have to juggle, you yeah. know, just um, sort of decide which jobs uh, you sort of take and uh, what, how much chaos it'll cause in the rest of the family. Because, you know, we have nothing, as actors, we have nothing regular, regular in our lives, apart from school. So now we're sort of stuck to term times, and that has to sort of fit. But now my daughter's a teenager, so uh, it's time to come back, I think. You know, so I, I'll have a lot more choice and a lot more time to fit in stuff. 
Oh, good. So that's sort of where it is. It's been difficult, but it, it's also, you know, it's exciting as well. But don't take anything for granted. You know, which is, you know, what what happens, what happens. You know, at the minute, at the minute, neither of us got jobs, but that could change by the end of the day. Well, this is it. I mean, I'm intrigued because. When I look at your, I mean, you've got a resume most actors would be incredibly jealous of because you've got so many <laughs> quality crime dramas to your name. You know? And I'm, right. I'm intrigued because how much do you think the bill has played a hand in you getting Wire and the Blood, DCI Banks, WPC 56? Do you, do you think there's a, there's a few Debbie Keane fans in the industry? Who are casting you? I don't know. I don't, uh, I, I don't think so. I don't, well, I don't think that it's specifically for those parts. I, I know when I left the bill, there was nothing happened for a long time, and it was a bit, it was a bit depressing. But um, then things started to. I think just because I've, I've been in a regular series helps, you know. Just you've been working, and mm. uh, you know, regularly. But um, I do. Maybe it's something about me, but I do. I mean, I was up for a part in Aberdell playing another copper, and yet, you know, I do go up for quite a few police women, and I don't know if that's to do with the bill or just to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, you... I'd like to play someone mad. I'd like to play someone funny, you know. So I'd like to play the other side, but that hasn't happened yet. Well, I, I very much enjoyed your, your latest episode of Doctors because you, you've done four or five, haven't you? Yeah, so... Um... The Doctors are lovely to do because they're a really nice bunch of people. Half of them are, you know, there's makeup artists in the bill there. So it's a, oh. it's a really nice connection back to sort of people from the, the old days. Well, yeah, I, uh, to me, it's in terms of what is on television now, in terms of formula and... and offering things for the industry i suppose doctors is the closest thing to that kind of rep company feel that the bill had where guest yes actors yes absolutely back. absolutely and um and it's the same speed as well you know the bill was a fast uh we, we three episodes at least a week um back when that wasn't really happening we sort of did set a precedent and i think um the doctors are doing that now there's, there's lots of companies it's sort of like churning it out but but well you know it's, it's all it's going well so um it does work it just can just get a bit exhausting sometimes <laughs> 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 well well let's go back when when did you first get the acting bug i always had it really i always had it when i was young but i didn't have the confidence to go into drama college because that sounded daunting and and um you know uh I, I thought I can't do that. I'll do something proper. But then I didn't. I went to art college because that was. I didn't stay on at school. Uh, when I was sixteen, I went to art college for two years and found out you could do theatre design. Ah. So I thought, brilliant! I'll do that. I can do that. You know, don't have to audition. So I did that. Did my degree in theatre design in Nottingham for three years uh, and left. And but while I was there, you know, there were productions uh, went on, and, and I was in the majority actually. Then left college. Got a couple of jobs working as design assistant making things and all the time thinking I want to be acting now so mm. I found a course in Cardiff the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama oh, cool. and uh, one year postgraduate and I got into that and I did that for a year and then that was it really I was sort of in the profession and um, loving it and I went straight into theatre and education um, uh, up in Lee in Lancashire uh, it doesn't exist anymore really well not much um, and then after that, I left, moved to Manchester and did lots of regional rep. Um, so, yeah, I've done a, a variety of things. How about television growing up? Because, I mean, you just seem to have, I mean, you're a natural on television. You know, yeah, you, you know so, some people just don't, are, aren't at home on TV. Where you just look like you were born to to be oh. in television drama. I, I mean, you're such you a know. lovely man, Oliver. Oh, you really are. Nice. Um, <laughs> Um, I, well, I love doing telly. The thing with telly is that you, you film things completely out of order. Mm. Um, and so sometimes after you've done a bit of telly for a while, you think, yeah, it'd be nice to do a play where everything is just, you're telling a story in the right order and you get through it and that's it. But um, telly's are also, uh, yeah, it's a lovely thing, special thing. What was the telly you grew up watching? What What was your go-to? Doctor Who. Yay! Uh, Doctor <laughs> Who. Oh, <good>. uh, <laughs> I'm a massive Doctor Who. I'm sat in front. Well, of I know now it's come back. That's amazing. I mean, obviously, the, the, when I was young, Doctor Who wasn't what Doctor Who is now. Um, mm. You know, the, the sets shook visibly, um, <laughs> and it was something else. But that was of that time, um, so it was brilliant that it's come back, and it's it's amazing. So um, yeah, thrilled about Doctor Who. Would like to be in Doctor yes, Who. Yes, absolutely. How on your radar was the bill? How much of the bill had you seen? The, yes, I'd seen the bill, and that was something that you could always just jump into and watch an episode because it wasn't like a soap. So I always love that about the bill is that you don't have to keep watching every week. So mm. because I've never been a, a regular live person. So it's, I don't sit down 
at a certain time and say, right, I'm going to watch this, apart from the Durrells on a Sunday night, which is now finished. Uh-huh. But, um, so, uh, yeah, the bill was there. And, and when I got the bill, I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled. And I'd just moved to London, so it was, um, it was you're like, wow, this is it, you know. I'm doing something I really enjoy, and, and, and it's a great programme. Well, I've got right in front of me the yeah. Spotlight Directory of 1994, Actresses L to P. Um, okay. On page two thousand one hundred and forty nine, there you are. Your, your marvelous smile, and and, oh. and you're interestingly, you know, because for for listeners to this, you know, you have different sections: uh, young, younger character, character supporting, but yeah. you're straight in leading, which I love. You're in. Oh, you've got to right... try. You've got to dive <laughs> in there and try, haven't you? Really? I mean, there's no point saying I just like to be at the background. I'm just yeah, yeah. I'll lead. I'll lead. You know, and see where it goes. Because you never get the lead. Well, you might get the lead, but really, you just got that. They'll see you and go. Actually, she'd be good for that. You know, and supporting parts. To be honest, I think are more interesting. But you've got to go for the lead to start with. Yeah. Well, how did it happen then? How did you come to be joining the regular cast of the Bill? Well, me and Alan Westerway years ago, we both lived in Manchester. He just left college, and I was just living there anyway. Um, and we were asked to do a short film, a 10-minute film, with this young director, Jamie Gould. So we did this film, and that was lovely. And then Jamie Gould sent it off to places to get jobs, to get work as a director. And he happened to send it to the bill. And they were looking for two new people. So we got called in and basically got the job on the same day. So wow. it was all a bit like... And, and also my agent said it's for a probationary officer, thinking of, like a probation officer, rather, uh, not a, a regular. So I went in quite, you know calm and casual if i'd gone in thinking i was in, up for a regular in the bill i would have probably got you know squealed a bit uh, or something so um it yeah it was all very quick and very uh, amazing and lovely wow that's fantastic yeah well, yeah they've tried the sort of doubling of probationers joining together later but they never got it as good as they did for oh. you and alan I, 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 <laughs> That's it. I know it's for writing as well, but you two yeah. just owned those parts. I mean, you oh. really did do a sublime job that I hope you're proud of because. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, I do. yeah, Good. yeah, a, yeah. It was a great time there. I yeah, I really enjoyed it. Who, who do you remember uh, welcoming you both from the regular cast? What were your memories of first arriving and sort of uh, stepping into the world of Sun Hill? But, so generally, that, that's another thing that was lovely about the building was that the cast was fantastic. You know, it was really, um, really nice bunch of people. The Trudy, of course, Queen, yes. the Queen, Trudy. <laughs> um, I, mean, I still see Trudy, so that's lovely. We still see Trudy, so that's lovely. Not enough, but we do. And Tom Butcher as well. And the thing about Tom is he's played such a sort of quite a hard character in Loxton, you know, and, and actually when you meet him, he's quite mad. So that was um, lovely to meet him. Um, but Hugh Higginson, you know, just, they're all really welcoming. And, uh, of course, Graham Cole, but all of them. It was, uh, it was, it was. I felt very included straight away. Oh, uh, describe a typical day in the life of making an episode of The Bill from your perspective. Oh. What was your routine? Oh. Well, I mean, uh, you're in usually about sort of um, seven at the. Yeah, I was. There were times when I was in a lot. Um, mm. it, it did get a bit exhausting sometimes. Um, but seven o'clock in, uh, make up uh, on set eight, then. Because three episodes are made at once, you might go from one unit to another, then back to another. You know, there were some times where you do three units in a day. Just you know, the scheduling was amazing. How they did it, I'm never quite sure because they didn't have these computers, and it was sticks of paper on the wall. You know, yeah. go from one unit to the other. Generally, the day would finish about six or seven, but then you do also have night shoots, and that could be up until you know five o'clock in the morning. It was full on, yeah. actually. And at first, the first sort of couple of years, it was really basically three episodes. But then it started to get into doing one hours. Mm. And then we do specials. Um, and then they started, to, a couple of years in, they started um, joining episodes together to make like a six part. Yeah. Yeah. And getting and also trying to get us all a bit more sexy, which was a bit of a shock to the system <laughs> at the time. I think I think me and Alan Westaway had the first Sun Hill snog, which yeah. was um, which was <laughs> <laughs> which was a shock to us both. But there you go. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, basically seven till seven, but that's just basic, you know. Then, then there's the other stuff around it. Well, that's that's always interesting because you presumably almost overnight became someone who was recognised down the street and in the public. What what was that like to deal with? Yeah, that was interesting because a lot of the time people would say, um, 
oh, she's in London's Burning. Is her at London's <laughs> Burning? Because um, they think uniform, but they'd get the wrong uniform. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I did get some lovely comments, but also some, you know, oh, she's not as fat as she looks on telly. That was, that was quite a common one, because the uniform didn't do much for you, really, but um, that's just vanity speaking. And also people would stand right close to you and talk about you and look at you, not realising, not thinking that you could hear them because they were so used to seeing you at a distance. Sometimes it was lovely. Other times it was a bit of a, a weird thing. And being followed around the supermarket sometimes could be a bit um, not very nice. No, I can imagine. I, I'm always intrigued by that side of it because it's not what a lot of the fans of this podcast probably even think about, the fact that no. you know, when filming stops, you, you don't quite go back to the life that you had before. No, no, and I know I was recognised for a long time, and occasionally someone, I met a, a, a woman who was uh, in the murder squad, actually, not long ago on the high street, and uh, she was so lovely, and she was, you know, she she's called Deborah as well, so she, oh. it was, she was talking about her relationship to the show, and, and, you know, and she stayed in the police force, and, you know, and she used to watch it all the time, and so it's nice when you meet someone who is, a, you know, a really a real fan, who followed your story. And what did you like about playing Debbie? What appealed to you about her character? She was keen and she was just straightforward. She just get on with it and do the right thing, always. You know, I mean, Loxton was always doing, you know, dodgy things, but uh, Debbie Keane would stick to the rules and she was nice. Mm. She was a nice girl, which is why now I'd like to play someone bad. But she was <laughs> really nice. And if, you know, if you want a copper, you want a nice one. And she was brave. She didn't hold oh, back, yeah. did she? You know, she held her own. Yeah. 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 Well, I've always loved a bit of stage combat. Nice. I do love a fight, and uh, so it was really nice when you you, you knew you'd got a, st- a stuntman on set, and you had to do a bit of a, a fight. So I, I've always loved getting in on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you you seem to have a particular relish in your eye during the paintball episode. Oh yeah. Oh yes, that was fun. Yeah, and um, yeah, and we were all there then, so that was just a, an absolute laugh. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good time. I mean, how did it work? Because I mean, you did three and a half years on the bill. Was it was it like a rolling contract? And were, how much were you consulted in terms of what was going to happen with Debbie? But did you weren't really consulted with what was going to happen to the character at all. You just sort of read the uh, episodes, and 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 you know, some of them you just go, oh, brilliant! They they liked what I did on that one, and then that's been enhanced and taken somewhere else. And other times that you'd just be a, a regular character, and you could, and sometimes they did swap people around so if say if i was too busy then polly page would get an episode that i was supposed to be doing you know so that sometimes happened but it, it seemed to work all right but um started off on a six month contract i think just to try and after that they offered us three years wow um so that sort of yeah that was it really after six months it was going to be six months to see then maybe a year but they just said three years so it was uh, that was lovely to get that sort of a reassurance that you've got a job for three years as an actor. Well, that, and that's actually quite rare of, of, yeah. of the different people I've spoken to. So they obviously had great and quite and deservedly so they had great faith in you. And but 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 oh. Al, Alan didn't go for the three years. He he left before you. Do, do you recall? Yeah, we were allowed to do that if we was you know if if we found ourselves uh, wanting to go and try different things. We were allowed out of the contract, but it was mm. you know you sort of just had to ask nicely. Did Alan confide in you he was going to do that? You you joined together with what was his... I mean, he did writing as well. You know, he yeah. was always sort of wanting to do other things. And only the first year did we spend a lot of time together because we were probationers. And so, you know, mm. Debbie and Nick. After that, we, you know, I was used to us doing our own separate bits within the show. So when he left, it wasn't a great surprise. It, you know, there does come a time where you just want... Because it's such a, it's such a formulaic thing as well. Mm. You do sort of want to do something like, you know, me, I wanted to play someone bad or play some, something completely different for a while, just for a change. Yeah. Um, and so the time was right for both of us. I sort of just stayed on that bit longer. Well, you, you both uh, delivered the comedy so well. In Alan's last episode, when you're having that ridiculous dinner dates and oh. you're trying to play a prank, I mean, that's gold dust. That is such a marvellous oh. episode. <laughs> Good, yes. And yes, that was the first Sunhill Snug one. And that, that yeah. was, um, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> We did love. Well, yes, it was lovely working with Alan. <laughs> <laughs> and and how about the crew? You know, I, I'm... oh, crew were brilliant. I love the crew, and you sort of like, sometimes still bump into some of them. And you know, on other things uh, like Holby City, I sort of bump into a couple of people. Mm. And everywhere you go, you bump into someone who was on it. So it's um, yeah, the crew were fab. 
one of the fun parts of the bill was every year they would do a kind of Christmas special and you you got the most bombastic of Christmas specials with the, all the characters taking part in the Sunhill pantomime. Oh, Jimmy Winner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to sing in that, didn't That's I? That's right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. Yeah, that was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like centre stage in that, so... I was, I was Aladdin, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't wearing much in that episode, I vaguely remember, which was a bit odd, <laughs> after the uniform. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was great fun. And we filmed that down in Portsmouth, which is a place I go to a lot now, because, um, you know, it's on the way to the Isle of Wight. That was great fun because also you don't often work with many other actors in you know within the cast. You usually just get one pairing. I was always with Hugh Higginson quite a lot, but on that one, everyone was down in Portsmouth in Southsea um, filming together, and that was a, a bit of a laugh. Yes, very yeah. good fun. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's great that they did. They know that you because you you were a marvelous singer. You know, did did they know that you could sing and? Uh, I don't think I would say I'm a marvellous singer. I can hold a tune, thank you. Um, but uh, we we did do another charity do. We were quite often asked to do charity do's, and one of the charity do's we did was um, to take part in a Christmas thing at the Royal Albert Hall. And uh, Andrew McIntosh, who played Greg, he was a brilliant musician, and he did all the arrangements and everything. And it was a, like a, a, a compilation of Christmas carols and Christmas songs, and he did all the harmonies and whatnot, and we went from one to another. And it was really lovely. And so I can say that I've sung on the Royal Albert Hall stage, yeah. but only because I was in the bill. No one would be asking me to do that otherwise, because um, on my own I'm, I'm less, <laughs> less confident, to put it that way. But that was great. Yeah, that must have been... That must have got the butterflies going before you... Yeah, yeah, it did. It, you know, because it's huge. And you, when you sort of walk onto the stage, you can't quite believe you're there. Because, mm. you know, when you're filming, you're filming and you're, there's only a few of you and you're sort of anywhere. You know, there's no one looking, really. But when you're standing on stage, it, it's uh, at the Royal Albert Hall, you, um, yeah, yeah, enjoyed every minute of it. But, yes, the butterflies were there. Bless you. And what other opportunities did the Bill give you as a sort of spin-off, you know, as being on the, shall we call it, the celebrity circuit? You know, what other opportunities did you have? Celebrity circuit? We're never quite celebrities, the Bill. EastEnders, all the soaps, they were celebrities. The, the celebrity culture didn't quite get us. We won a TV award. Um, I think it was the National TV Awards, but, uh, for most popular drama. I think that was that 96, 97. Mm. Um, so that was a, you know, we went out, went out together for that one. Oh, charities. Oh, yes, we were asked to do lots of things for charities. And, and the charity bike ride from Jerusalem to Alatis, that, we, that was the hardest thing I have ever done. That was me, Simon Rouse, and Ian Fletcher cycling from Jerusalem to Alatis, 250 miles in five days. And uh, it was across desert. It was across mountain ranges. We slept in Bedouin tents a couple of the times. I got Achilles tendonitis in my ankle because uh, that's where your Achilles tendon is. And, um, and also the, the saddle was something uh, that I, I... Yeah, that was shocking. I didn't think I'd have intimate relations ever again, but there you go. Um, got over that one. Um, so, but that was the physically hardest thing I've done, but also felt great once we'd done it. And that was the Bernardo's Children's Homes. Oh, wow. What is that part of the world like? I've never been. Well, it's like cycling through a ladybird book of the Bible stories. Because mm. it's, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Mind you, having said that, the first two days was like Derbyshire because it was muddy. There was lots of mud as you were coming out of Jerusalem and we had to get off the bikes and scrape the mud off the wheels. It was that bad. And then we hit the desert and then it was just as far as you could see. You know, it was just desert and then the odd shepherd with uh, some goats or sheep, you know. So it was, <laughs> it, it was quite, quite bizarre, but, um, but beautiful. And, and yeah. from uh, from Jerusalem to Guernsey, I believe you took part in a charity cricket. Ah, match. yes, another <laughs> yes. That was a uh, cricket match, and I don't play cricket, but I had a go. And um, that was for another. I think it was for a children's home charity on Guernsey. And uh, again, that was another group of us. It sounds like we did this a lot, but it did, you know, this is over three and a half years. There were about mm. three or four things. Um, and who came to that? I think Billy, Stephen Beckett. 
And then there was a charity dinner in, in the evening, you know. Um, I can't remember who won the cricket match, but it was just a, another great weekend. Yeah. I suppose, yeah. as you say, that, that kind of celebrity culture hadn't started. If if you'd been in the bill maybe 10 years later and after doing three and a half years, you'd have been invited to do Strictly or I'm a Celebrity. Oh, yes, or, or, or uh, Jungle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I quite like to do the Jungle. Mm. <laughs> Would you really? I'd miss, the, yeah. I'd miss the dog, I miss my daughter, I miss my husband and the uh, bearded dragon. But um, apart from that, yeah, I think being in the jungle would be quite fun. Apart from eating um, kangaroo balls, I wouldn't like that. No, no. No, no. <laughs> I don't mind beetles, but um, uh, not eating kangaroos. Thank you. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it must have been a, a very nice period of your life because of that. As you say, on, on, on that episode, Twanky, you're working with all of the cast, but normally yeah. you're working with a lot of guest actors and who who's yeah who stands out in your mind from people you worked with on the bill well yeah there was the lovely late and great morris denham mm. now um he you know you see him and he's, he's a legend you know he, he was so he was in his 80s very frail and he did I was walking once at lunchtime me and helen the wardrobe girl and uh, he was walking between us he tripped and we both caught him and he was light as a feather oh. tiny but sharp sharp brain and so funny he was lovely to work with that was a joy to work with him mm. and there's another one another one who stands out in my mind a young actor scottish he was still at college it was his first job and um i think i reassured him he was very good and i reassured him oh you're gonna be fine don't worry about it and his name was james mcavoy <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. He's doing very well. I like to watch him and think I taught him everything he knows. But um, they are. <laughs> I mean, what, when when you do when you do work now, uh, do young actors ask you for advice? Uh, sometimes, especially if it's their first TV. You know, there's a certain technique you, you, it helps. You know, and uh, yes, I'm always quite happy to give advice to the young uns. Am I right? I could be wrong, but I, I I've done some digging. Um, yeah. Was your first telly a kid's show called 3711? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're scaring me now. Yeah. But yes, you, you've, I... you've looked into my past. Yes, <laughs> I did. That. With Tony Haygarth, that was that was great fun as well. That was um, up in, uh, yeah, not Manchester. It was I was living in Manchester at the time, and it was up north, wasn't it? Mm. And it was one of those out, outward bound type courses, and I was one of the uh, leaders. Oh. <laughs> Me and Tony Haygarth, yeah. That yeah, but nice. I, I can still remember the theme tune for that. That was on when I was a oh, kid. Oh, that's because you were young then. Yeah, I, I don't think it's ever been shown again, that no. show. So um, here we go. We need a, we need a comeback because uh, <laughs> that, 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 I'd like to see three. I can, I can, it went three, three seven, seven, eleven on the hopscotch. On, oh, on the playground. right. That, um, ring, that rings a bell, but yeah. it wasn't. Long, long time ago now. <laughs> I don't think... I mean, they, they made Debbie a sergeant, but kind of like off-camera. I don't think they did you proud with your no. exit. No, I didn't have an exit, really. No. Well, originally, there was going to be a, a, a big sort of... Uh, not sexual harassment case, but storyline with Michael. What was his character Oh, Michael Higg, Egg, Eddie Santini, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, and they sort of like did a lot of flirting for a while, and I just wondered where it was going. But then that sort of was dropped, and Caroline Katz mm. came in and did, and then she's you know, and then she married him. Yeah. She married Michael in real life, yeah. so that was lovely. So that that's where they sort of went with that to start with, but it it didn't sort of work out. But um, no, I just sort of disappeared, really, yeah. didn't I? Yeah, yeah, and you deserved better. Thank you. I was I was a bit sad by that, but that's just, you know, it was chaotic in those days with the amount of episodes and the changing, and, you know, it wasn't the regular three a week. It was uh, lots of specials and lots of um, trying to make us all a bit sexy. So yeah, yeah. You just went. And you explained that it was hard after. I mean, was it strange? Oh, yeah. The yeah. first, well, I think it was because no one knew I'd left. <laughs> right. So um, that's what I like to think. But then things did pick up a bit, but it was just like, bits of, or bits of this Holby City. Yeah, it was just, Holbys and Doctors. I think Doctors had just started then. So those sort of programmes came along. Uh, didn't do any theatre for a long time, actually. It's it's interesting, the, the, the different dynamic of actually making a play and, and making television. And I often hear yeah. that with, with actors, that they have a... While they're doing the TV show, they have a hankering to do a play. And when they're doing yeah. a play... Are, 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 are actors ever 
truly happy, do you think, or satisfied with what... No. What... <laughs> No, we're always looking for something else. It's always looking for something else. Uh, it's just finding that balance. Like I said, you know, if you're doing a play, you're telling a story from start to the end. If you're doing filming, you could do the last scene first. First thing in the morning, you've got to be all emotional about something you've not actually played yet. You know, all that sort of thing. So that, but it's you know, it's all doable. But they're different different things altogether. But it's about finding the balance between doing a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. I think. I'm not, you know, one or the other. At the moment, I'd like to do some theatre, just to sort of get the craft back. It's been a while since I've been on stage. And your voice can go, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. So um, mm. it'd be nice to sort of tell a story again and be on stage. What are the sort of unfulfilled ambitions? Doctor Who you've mentioned, but what is oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Peaky Blinders. Love to be in Peaky Blinders. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, I'm, from, I'm from the West Midlands, so um, it'd be really nice to uh, do something with me home accent. Yeah. But, uh, you know, one day, that'd be nice. Uh, play someone rough in Peaky Blinders. That'd be great. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'd love to do Peaky Blinders. Uh, of course, love to have been in the Durrells, but that's finished. Mm. Um, just because it's a lovely show, and uh, I love the clothes, and it yeah. was uh, idyllic. So, and the storylines, they're all a bit mad, and that was very nice and very comforting. Yeah, lots of stuff, lots of things. Well, related to um, your charity of choice, which we ask listeners to donate to for you giving your time to generously, you, you sent me a, a wonderful website, Sonnets. And maybe you could tell us a, a little bit about that and, and how the listeners can support that for you. Well, a couple of years ago, I worked and uh, uh, with an actor called Tom Blythe. And his dad had dementia for many years. It's called Louis Body dementia and uh it's, it's a particularly vicious form and uh he at the, and his brother at the time were away at college at university so his mum was left to deal with caring for his dad and it took about six years until he eventually died so he's decided i think he only started doing it last year to get a lot of professional actors to read a sonnet he would record it and put it on a website it's sonnets v dementia i mean you can also go on to sonnet, uh, all the sonnets uh, and through this website people can listen to an actor speaking the sonnets and donate and that money goes straight to dementia uk and because the good thing about dementia uk is they don't just support the people with dementia they support the carers as well mm. and that was something that you know tom uh experienced it's his mum poor mother was um worn out, you know, with the emotional side of having a husband who she was losing emotionally, but also with the fact that she had to, she was only small and he was six foot four, you know, she had to mm. deal with him physically as well. And, and that's, so that's uh, why I've chosen this particular charity. And also you can go on and you can listen to sonnets and there's some lovely actors there, you know, some, they're all beautiful. Oh, so, yeah. um, so, uh, do that. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, a good yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I shall pop a link uh, when this goes, yeah. goes live and, and people can donate. And, uh, I mean, we're so grateful to you for doing this. What is what is your message to fans of Debbie Keane? And, and are you still amazed that you know, 20 years on since you left the series that people are yeah. still enjoying your work? I am. I am, absolutely. And uh, I was thrilled, actually, when I realised that they were going to re-show them all yeah. on was it drama? That's right. Um, I've not I've not caught my own yet because they don't seem to be in any order. It is lovely looking back and seeing. I mean, they are from a different time slightly now. Everything's changed, but it, they're still good pieces of drama in themselves. And uh, it's, it takes you back to a time that you know was lovely. Mm. And I was young. I was young then. Do you think the bill could work today? Do you think the bill could come back in a slightly different format? I think. Because um, everything's so fast and racy now, and the full, and, and the bill was sort of quite comfortable. But I do, I think, I think there's still space for it. Maybe we could have you as a drug dealer on the Jasmine Allen with your own crime syndicate. You know, we could. Oh yeah, yeah. She yeah. moved sideways, Debbie <laughs> King. She didn't do that anymore. She just, yeah, didn't want the promotion. She just thought she'd do something else. Yeah, we'll get, <laughs> get you in line of duty. Oh, now that would be fantastic. That's one of the best. Yes, oh, that would be amazing to be yeah. in that. Yeah. So that's on my list, and I'm glad it's going again. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's let's yeah. let's get you there. Yes, well, please, Oliver. Can you yeah. do that. Oh yeah, I'll I'll do my I'll do my best, Mr. Mercurio. Right. If you're listening, we've got a legend yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> well, um, thank you ever so much, Andrew. I'm really grateful. Have a, a continue uh, your warm you. glow. 
Yeah, I have now. Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I've been aching all morning, but I'm going to sort of like hover now. <laughs> I might even skip. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe not. Not Maybe, skip. Yeah, you, you'll find yourself pursuing a suspect down the street. You'll be getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. You're a lovely man. Oh, bless That's you. really enjoyed this morning. Thanks. Oh, oh it's such a pleasure. Thank you, thank you for uh, pleasing my inner nine-year-old. He's delighted. Oh, I can't believe you were nine then. That <laughs> makes me feel very old. But no. I'll, 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 I'll deal with that. <laughs> What a lovely lady. Absolutely fantastic to speak to the wonderful Andrea Mason. And you can get to meet Andrea in person at the upcoming Bill Reunion 4, courtesy of the marvellous Misty Moon events ran by the lovely Stuart and Jen Morris. Andrea will be reunited with both Graham Cole and Lynn Miller, plus number one in the Bill podcast charts, its fan favourite Suzanne Maddock, She'll be there as well. Get your tickets booked by visiting cinemamuseum.org.uk. Check out the events tab. And on the night, let Andrea know what a legend she is. Such a very talented lady. You can support Dementia UK via all the sonnets.co.uk. Some fabulous actors reading Shakespeare's sonnets, all for a very good cause. And you might notice another Sun Hill legend in there as well. Now, I had some very interesting feedback recently from long-term podcast listener Alan Hunting, very nice gentleman who politely explained he missed the old theme tune covers for the Bill podcast, which I'd used in series one and two. As I hopefully finessed my approach to the podcast in the early days, uh, I began to write and split my intros in a certain way to match the timing of the old theme tune cover. Alan's Facebook comment had a lot of people agreeing with him because the old theme tune he felt was unique to the podcast. And I'd never thought of it like that, but I I suppose he's right. And there was me trying to sex things up a bit. Who am I? Paul Marquess? The snag is, when I read Alan's comment, not only had I recorded the podcast with Stephen Hartley and this podcast with Andrea, but I'd also recorded the next two. Look at me getting ahead of myself in the scheduling. And my intros for those weren't done to the old timing. Like this one with Andrew, I've been using it as a chance to put a more personal slant on the intros, as I am a fan just like all of you. However, I would like to announce that the old theme tune cover will return for future episodes of The Bill Podcast, which was recorded by my old pals John, Rich, Colin and Simon and their band QC Pass. With that in mind, I'll stop waffling on, and until next time, I'll leave you with this.